What a wonderful honor to be here today. I'd like to start out by telling you a story. I was in an office supply store parking lot, and a woman came up to me, and she said, oh my goodness, I know you. You took care of my baby in the NICU. And she called me by my full name, which is no short feat. <laughs> so I knew that I must have taken care of this woman's child. She reminded me about her daughter, Bethany, who was born a full 16 weeks premature at 24 weeks gestation. So in addition to her prematurity, Bethany was born with a condition called gastroschisis. This mother's child was born with her intestines on the outside of her body. And she remembered me because I encouraged her, even when the doctors told her that Bethany might not make it. And now Bethany was on her way to one of the most elite high schools in the city of Chicago. This is when I decided that I wanted to focus on supporting diverse urban parents like Bethany's. A big part of supporting parents is providing health education. But the videos that we were using to support parenting education were outdated. We were trying to teach parents principles, and they were looking at the video scenes <laughs> because one example was a parent playing with their child in the sandbox, which is beautiful. But the sandbox was in the living room. And the parent says, who in the world has a sandbox in their living room? <laughs> so we knew we needed a better program, a program that was designed for the parents that we worked with. So that's what we did. The first thing that we did was create a parent advisory council composed of the parents who had participated in our previous program. And we asked those parents, what should we do differently? What video scenes should we shoot? Where should we shoot them? And they gave us real world examples. They told us, when I'm at the bus stop waiting to catch the bus, and I've got little people running around my feet, what do I do? When I'm at the laundromat and I'm trying to fold clothes my child is bored and wanting to roam around. What do I do with that? So we took their feedback, and we developed a new series of videos in a completely new way. So what did we do? We hired a production company. We did a casting call for African American and Latino families and we hired those real families, and we filmed them in real-world settings. And we called that program the Chicago Parent Program. I'd like to share with you one of my favorite scenes from the Chicago Parent Program. Often parents are unsure of how to discipline their children when they misbehave in public places. Watch the mother in the next scene discipline her son with a timeout in a laundromat. You can't throw the block, Sean. Whoa. Whoa. I told him he can't. You know what? Time out. Time out. Hit that corner right there. Time out. Now, watch how this mother ends the timeout with her son. What makes her timeout work so well? 
You sorry? You learned your lesson, Jerry You're not going to do it no more? Okay, come on. Fall down. Do it again? And kiss it. So what makes this innovative? These are real parents, real children, real moments, and real dialogue. It's not a lecture. Evidence shows that people learn better from experience and from dialogue. The Chicago Parent Program has been implemented on a national scale in cities such as New York and Baltimore and in early childhood learning programs such as Head Start. In addition, the program has made a real impact on the lives of parents. They've boosted their confidence and their skills. Children's behaviors and their behavior problems have decreased. We forged stronger parent-child relationships. But while working with the Chicago Parent Program, I started noticing things. That's what I do. That's my superpower. I notice things. And by the way, all of you have a superpower too and you're gonna to need to figure out what that is. But I noticed that fathers got minimal attention. And for a lot of fathers, the attention that they got was negative. Some fathers started to buy into that narrative and they would think, well, maybe my child is doing okay. Maybe I'm not important. Maybe I don't need to be around. They're doing fine with their mom. And I knew that I needed to focus on the fathers. So when fathers are present and positively engaged with their children, fathers do better. Children do better. Mothers do better. Families and entire communities flourish as a result. And then when you turn it around and think about the absence of fathers in children's lives. Children are more likely, four times more likely to live in poverty, seven times more likely to become a parent as a teenager, more likely to commit a crime, and twice as likely to drop out of high school. On a national scale, when you look at the data, about half of all children today live in homes without their biological fathers. When you look at African-American families, that number goes as high as two-thirds of those children who don't live with their father. I want to help the fathers of those children. So I applied what I learned with the Chicago Parent Program to build a program just for fathers. So what did we do? We did it again. We hired an advisory council of fathers. We hired a production company, recruited families, wrote scripts, and hired a narrator. And the advisory council decided that this program should be called Building Bridges to fatherhood. So clearly, fathers and mothers do some things differently. They talk differently. For example, if a child is asking for assistance, the mother might say, here, let me show you. But the father, on the other hand, is likely to say, you got this. I think you can figure this out. They also play differently. I'm gonna give you an example about my niece. She probably has every black Barbie that has been created. <laughs> There's thick Barbie, thin Barbie, Afro Barbie. 
Barbie house in the living room, so she plays Barbie. But when her dad is around, she'll say, let's fight, Daddy. <laughs> and they're on the floor, and they're wrestling around, and they're roughhousing, and she's laughing hysterically, trying to beat him up. My sister, on the other hand, is doing this. <laughs> so the truth is, children need both, and they need both parents. It increases their confidence, it increases bonding, and it supports growth and development. Talking about roughhousing is one thing, seeing it is another. I'd like to share another video from our program. Which way should we go? Other way. Which way? That way. This way. No, the right, the right, 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 right. Let's right. see the corner. We're going to the right. This way? The left. The left? Yeah. This way? Do it again. Yeah. yeah. Ready? Yes. Wait for me. It's <laughs> just And they went into the water and they went <laughs> splash. Again, what makes this innovative? These are real fathers, real children, real moments, and real dialogue. I've decided to focus my life's work and my research on supporting families. But you have to look at the root cause, you have to dig deeper, and you can't take a Band-Aid approach to anything that you're interested in. But nursing innovation doesn't always happen at the bedside. By innovating, digging deeper, and discovering the root cause problem, you can advance healthcare forward for all of humanity. Thank you.